Did you know that it's possible to reconstruct 3D views of the surface of the moon using original Apollo photos from the 1960s? Using a technique known as photogrammetry, we can reconstruct three-dimensional spatial data from old photographs, provided that we have at least two images taken from slightly different positions. Stereoscopic views using two side-by-side -side cameras with the same separation as our eyes gives us a fixed 3D perspective view. Photogrammetry matches up features in multiple photos to recreate an actual three-dimensional view. The more photos you have of the same object from different angles, the more accurate the model will be. For a complete 3D model, you need photos taken from all directions. Photos can be taken sequentially for a static scene, or simultaneously if your subject could move between photos. I downloaded all available NASA images taken by the Apollo astronauts on the surface of the moon and also some taken in lunar orbit and found many 3D views by trial and error. It took many hours to test sets of photos, and some of them produced usable 3D models. During the Apollo 11 moonwalk, Buzz Aldrin took two photos of his boot print in the lunar soil. Fortunately, he moved slightly when taking the second photo, so the photogrammetry software could build a depth map of the lunar surface and the boot print. Here's another model that was generated from just two photos. On April 23, 1972, Apollo 16 astronaut Charlie Duke and fellow astronaut John Young explored the Descartes Highlands in the lunar rover. While they were there, Duke left this photograph on the surface of the moon. Fortunately, he took two photos of it from slightly different angles, allowing us to see it in 3D over 50 years later. This model of a boulder from Apollo 17 was generated from 23 images at various angles. The two source photos for this model were not shot as a stereo pair, and there was some movement when the second photo was taken. This model of a boulder at Apollo 15 Station 7 was generated using only four of the nine available images shown. The remainder of the images couldn't be used because the software could not find any matching features. Also note the appearance of camera registration marks on the surface texture. This happens because the source images are used by the photogrammetry software to build the surface texture for the 3D model. These marks are etched into a glass plate that goes just in front of the film and the camera. They're recorded onto the image so that if there is any distortion of the film later in processing, they can be used to correct for the distortion when printing or scanning the images. It's possible to manually remove the registration marks from the surface texture, but it takes a lot of time, so I left them as is. This model was generated using six out of the seven available photos, showing the trench dug at Station 4. This is the highly publicized orange soil which was found during EVA 2 at Taurus Littrow. The tripod-like object is a gnomon and photometric chart assembly, which is used as a photographic reference to establish local vertical sun angle, scale, and lunar surface color. Here's a model of Apollo 17 Station 2 Boulder 3 that was generated using 7 out of 11 available photos. In many of the models, you'll see areas where the surface texture is missing or black. 
If there is no photo available of an area, the software won't be able to build a model of the surface, so it is left as a gap without surface texture. This can also occur in areas that are in shadow. I was surprised that I got a good model of the plaque because the software often has trouble with reflective surfaces. Here's a model of Alan Shepard. Unfortunately, he moved after the first photo was taken, so there's some mismatch in ghosting. This is a view of a trench at Apollo 14 Station G. Trenches were dug with a vertical wall facing the sun to determine the soil's ability to maintain a vertical face and to reveal any possible layering. This model was created from five photos. Here's another boulder at Apollo 17 Station 6, Fragment 5. This one was made from 22 out of 30 available images. I also found some nice views taken on orbit. Actually, using photogrammetry with orbital photos is much easier. As long as there are two or more photos taken several seconds apart, the orbit will carry the camera over the terrain in a very consistent way. A single pass is sufficient, provided there are no tall features that would block the view of any part of the area being photographed. The best method used to get high quality 3D models is to capture images on a grid pattern and also fill in with oblique or side facing views. This way the area being photographed is captured from all sides and angles. The parallax shift of matching points in each adjacent photo can then be calculated.
Here's a nice sequence of seven photos showing the Apollo 15 landing site at Hadley. Here are two photos showing the rendezvous of the lunar module with the Apollo 11 command module. From just these two images, I was able to generate this surface model. Unfortunately, since the lunar module was also in motion moving toward the command module, the software could not match any points on it, so it was not included. This model was made from a set of eight photos taken as Apollo 15 left the moon on a return trajectory to the Earth. This view shows the previous model plus the computed camera locations. Here's the one that really amazed me. This model was made from a set of eight photos taken after trans-Earth injection, after the spacecraft has performed a burn to leave lunar orbit and return to Earth. This sequence starts at about 1,000 miles from the moon and extends out to about 10,000 miles. This gives us a really good view of what it was like to leave the moon and return to Earth and see the moon receding in the distance. The software, of course, has to calculate the location of the camera for each photo in order to build the 3D model so we can actually see part of the trajectory of the spacecraft returning to Earth. So I built another model using another set of black and white images of the trans-Earth coast and got this sequence. Using mission log transcripts I found online, I was able to map approximately when each of the photos was taken and compare that to the trajectory. This sequence of photos begins at about a thousand miles from the moon and extends out to about 20,000 miles over a period of nine hours. These relatively low resolution images produced another surprise. Even from a thousand miles or more from the moon, and with just a few photos, we're clearly able to see raised surface features such as craters. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has been mapping the moon since 2009. It has captured images of all the Apollo landing sites in enough detail to see the spacecraft and tracks left by the lunar rovers and astronauts walking on the surface. Using images from multiple passes over the Apollo 12 site, I was able to create this 3D model. It clearly shows the lower stage of the lunar lander, the nearby Surveyor 3 lander, one of the instrument packages left on the surface, and the tracks made by the lunar rover.